Today we will talk about an important language feature of B4X named Resumable Subs. This feature is quite unique to B4X, so most developers are probably not familiar with this concept. A resumable sub is a sub that can be posed and later resumed in the exact same state. No thread is blocked while the resumable sub is posed. And when it later resumed, it will be executed on the same thread, usually the main thread. Let's create a resumable sub. This small circle icon tells us that it is a resumable sub. Any sub with a call to wait for or sleep keywords is a resumable sub. We will start with sleep. Sleep is similar to a timer that fires once. The sleep duration is measured in milliseconds. So in this case, it will sleep for half a second. Let's see it. You've seen this short delay, we can increase it. Two seconds. Let's see a small usage of sleep. I'm adding this button. And I would like to move it over the border when it is clicked. I can move it with the set layout animated. Method. We want to move it down. Let's test the first. Let's test the first uh, movement. Okay, good. Now we want to move it right. It's minus. This is the This will not work. Let's see. As you can see, it skipped this line. Set layout animated is not a blocking method. The program immediately continues to the next line. So it first started this animation, the first one, moving the button down, and then immediately it aborted the previous animation and started this one. We can use sleep here to solve it, like this. 
I'm extending the duration a bit to make sure that the previous animation has completed. And let's test it now. Okay. So we can complete the two other movements. Now we're moving it to the top. And back to the top left corner. That's it. Very nice. Now we can easily make it make the movement multiple times. And we can decrease. the duration each time. Let's try it. Not good enough. Because we need to wait after the last one as, as well. Again. You can see here the power of resumable subs, that the sub is resumed to the exact same state inside loops or branches. Creating this same animation without sleep or resumable subs will be a much more difficult task. It is important to understand the code flow of resumable subs. And the best tip that I can give you is to think about sleep or wait for keywords as if they were calls to the return keyword. Let's see an example. We want to store the result of the sum sub in a global variable. And what do you think will be the output? My guess is that it will be zero. Let's try. Yes. Let's run it with the debugger. And I'm proceeding line by line. A call to sleep is equivalent to a call to return. So continues here. And then at some point later, the sub is resumed and the next line is executed. The same thing will happen even if the interval is zero. Any call to sleep or wait for will always cause the code to return to the parent sub. Later we will see how we can wait for a resumable sub to complete. With the wait for keyword, we can handle an event in this specific place instead of the standard handler sub. Let's start with a very simple example. and run it. On the first click, no, it 
should be button one. On the first click, the event is handled here. And on the next click, it is handled in the standard event sub. Wait for is very, very useful. Let's see an example. I'm adding a few Im image views. I want to download a few images from the forum and show them with the image views we've just added. Let's start with the first image. I'm using the OK HTTP Utils 2 library to make the downloads and you should also use it in any of the platforms. There are two versions for this library. We don't want the NAN UI, we want, this one is for NAN UI projects. Note that the source code of this library is available in the form in B4X. The standard way to work with this library, at least before the resumable subs feature was available, is like this. the link the download method as you can expect is an async method it raises the job done event when it completes We need to check whether it was successful and we need to release it at the end. Set image get bitmap. Let's try it. And it is working. It is an animated GIF, so it looks like a short movie. Now, if we want to download the other images, we need to check the job name over here. and set the correct image view based on the job name. And if, if we want to download them one after another, we need to send the next job from the job done sub. It quickly becomes more and more complicated. We can instead use wait for like this. and just move the code over here. This will also work. It takes a few seconds. It is probably a large image. Now we wanted to, to download several images. Let's copy the links.
the last one. I will create another list with the image views. We no longer need to use the job name because we always handle this job in this place. So we created two lists with the links and the views and inside this loop we download an image, set it to the correct image view and continue with the next one. Let's try it. And it doesn't do anything because we didn't call download. So job done was never raised. Let's try it again. First one, second, third. Okay, it is working. As you can see, it downloaded the images one after another. Maybe we want to download them all at once. We can create a sub. Like this. This sub expects the link and the image view and it will and it will download and set the image. It is a resumable sub because we are calling wait for inside this sub. Now we can Call it like this. The difference between the previous code is that it now immediately continues to the next download. It doesn't wait for the previous one to complete. For this to work correctly, we must add the sender filter parameter, which we will soon talk about, like this.
and now it works. You can see that they were downloaded in random order and more or less together. The requests were sent immediately. Okay, now is the time to talk about the sender filter. Let's see why it didn't previously work. There could only be a single wait for call that waits for any event signature. When the job done event is raised, it checks whether there is a wait for call that is waiting for this event. And if not, it checks whether there is a standard, there is a standard event sub that handles the event. Every new call to wait for with the same event signature removes the previous one. The result is that only the last call was actually waiting for the job done event. Only image view 5 shows the image. Always the last one. The sender filter allows us to add a dynamic parameter to the event signature and only an event with the matching sender parameter will be handled. By adding it like this, only a job done event where the sender is the job instance, this job instance will be handled here in this specific instance and this way each resumable sub although the event name is the same each one waits for a different event and all the events are handled we have created a very useful sub that downloads an image and we can call it in all kinds of places in our program to download an image. Now there are cases where we might want to wait for it to complete. As I've previously said, this wait for call is equivalent to return. So if I'm calling this sub like this, let's download only the first one. And here I want to do something after the image was downloaded. This code will be executed before the image was downloaded. Let's see it. It is printed immediately and only a few seconds later we are seeing the image. This is the expected behavior. Now I'm going to show how we can wait for a resumable sub to complete and how to return a value from the resumable sub. Maybe we want to return true or false based on whether it was successful or not. The only type that we can return from a resumable sub is a resumable sub object. We can return any value we like inside the sub. In this case, I want to return the value of job success. And now I'm calling it like this. The call itself returns the sender filter object and I'm waiting for the complete event result with the correct type like this. Note that if we try a different event name, name then it will fail. We can only change here the parameter name and its type based on the correct type, based on the type that we actually return. Now let's 
let's run it. You can see that it first downloaded the image and only then logged this line. So it only continued here after the resumable sub completed. And we can call this resumable sub from many places at the same time and, and it will work properly. We can also use the result parameter. We can implement it again as we did before. And it will be downloaded, the images will be downloaded one after another. You can also use resumable sub if you just want to wait for the sub to complete. In that case, return null or an empty string or anything you want and just set the parameter to the correct type and ignore it. To conclude, this is a very important feature. It makes it much simpler to work with async methods. Nothing bad happens if there is a wait for call that waits for an event that never happens. It is very similar to having a sub that waits for an event that never happens. It is not actively waiting for the event. Many times I've seen cases that developers try to add another layer over sleep, because maybe like this. And then let's say I want to count to 10. And the result of this code is that it will print immediately print 1 to 10. Let's see. You need to again remember that from the calling sub perspective, a call to sleep or wait for is equivalent to a call to return. So if we use the debugger, we can see that it immediately returns and print the next one. The best solution in this case is to just use sleep instead of my sleep. It, it will work if we do it like this. It works like this because it sleeps over here. If we do want to call a different sub, then we must do it like this and wait for with the sub as the sender filter parameter and complete result as three. Now it will work. No, now it will wait for 1000 seconds. And now it works. Thank you.